Aloha, beautiful souls. Welcome to the July 2024 Astrology Transmission. If you are new to me and my world, my name is Adrian. I am a mentor to spiritual leaders. And one of the portals that I blow my medicine through, that I channel my gifts through in guiding you is astrology. So I'm going to touch on five specific things I want you to be aware of in the month of July, 2024, for you to heal, level up, leverage, and self-actualize in divine timing. Because astrology is literally how we can study divine timing and how we can live in alignment with divine timing. And when you click in your healing with this, your consistent actions, like all of that, and you make decisions with deep awareness of the stars and what's going on, it's very um, fruitful. It's very, it's extremely validating. It is connecting you with source. It is connecting you to divine timing rather than swimming against the current. And we are living in historic times, faded times, very volatile times. And we're going to get into that in the astrology of this month. Astrology is a way to ground you, to anchor you. And another way is to stay fully in your body. And a way that I help my clients with that is through potent nervous system reset and calibration in breathwork journeys. So if you're interested in any of that, go to the link in the comments and email me or message me on Instagram to explore how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one in any of that. So let's dive into July, 2024. So we start out the month with, we are in cancer season. Okay. Cancer energy is the crab. It is the divine feminine. It rules the breasts and the womb. It is the home. A key word of cancer energy is safety. It's all about that feeling of safety. And so cancer is the crab. It has that shell. And the reason why it has a shell is because the deep love and the deep safety within gets to be protected, gets to have boundaries, gets to have a holy fortress. Cancer is cardinal water. It is the shoreline, right? It is the beginning of the, the ebbs and flows of the element of water. And so because the crab has its home in its, in its shell, it can go through any kind of wave, whether the tide is high or the tide is, is low, um, you know, a cancer creates a deep, deep, deep nourishing home for themselves, wherever they are, and, and they are the home, right? And so that your body is the home for your soul. So we start out in that, in that essence with July, 2024. And we also start out with, you know, that's a very nurturing, nourishing, slower energy, right? We also start July with a very kind of like ass kicking energy with Saturn retrograde in Pisces. So Saturn, the planet of boundary restriction, limitation, obstacle, father time, it's the stern father teacher of the Zodiac that says, hey, kid, you got a dream? Okay, sit down, do the work. Sit down, show me the plan, show me the blueprint, right? So Saturn is now retrograde in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is the mystic, is the dream, is the greatest vision. It's the psychic realm. Unhealed, it is escapism and avoidance. So Saturn, a retrograde is a time where things come back around to review, refine, realign, redo. Okay. We're getting it's, it's a retrograde is a second chance from spirit. And so you are getting, we are all getting a second chance from spirit for our discipline, our structures, our long-term plans that are actually going to stand the test of time to hold the dream. Okay. So anything that's been hanging on by a thread, is about to be confronted with Saturn retrograde in Pisces. You can look back at 
June 17th through November 4th, 2023. This was the last time Saturn was retrograding in Pisces. There are some clues for you here. Similar themes, similar areas of your life. Now this is impacting the collective and you specifically in your unique natal chart. So if you want to know how this is all impacting you specifically, book a reading with me, book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. So I will have the link to both my email and my work with me page below this video. If you have any questions about what's correct for you, just email me and we'll figure it out. But this is the second iteration of Saturn retrograde in Pisces. And this time, Saturn will be retrograding from, Ju from June 29th, 2024 for four and a half months. So to mid-October, beginning of November 2024. So we'll be right around the election season in the U.S. at the end of the Saturn retrograde. This is a really big deal. Four and a half months of reviewing limitation, reviewing boundary, reviewing discipline, reviewing structure, all of that. So these lessons are coming around again. So the beginning of July, we start out with this nourishing, slow, like home safety with the cancer, sun and cancer, shining the light on all of these elements and the breasts and the womb, right? So it's very tied to the feminine energy. And with Saturn and Pisces, it's like this ass kicking, confronting, like the thing about Saturn, and he's so misunderstood. Saturn rewards hard work and Saturn won't lie to you because Saturn wants you to do what's actually required to get your dream in the long term, right? So when you do the work, when you work with Saturn, you can build a dream long-term, but it's this like things you haven't dealt with, things that you've been avoiding, things you've been holding by on by a thread, things you've been half-assing. It's all going to be exposed and, and Saturn's going to be like, nope, 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 nope. You got to go through this. You're not going around it. You got to go through. It's not anything a mouse can do. It's through. All right. So that's how we start the month of July. July is an extremely big line in the sand for 2024. Not only is it like, okay, we're in quarter three, we're at the beginning of a brand new month, but this is when the astrology is going to ratchet up in intensity and volatility and massive, massive change for the rest of 2024. So I've been saying it all the way since 2020, you know, 2020 was like hard and it was like pretty cute and docile compared to 2024, 2025, and 2027 in terms of the astrology and what's happening as we approach the shift of the background frequency from tribal to individual. Um, and this is very tied to human design, neutrinos, and the gene keys. If you don't know about that stuff, I highly recommend checking out a few different teachers. Raphael Webb, Sam Zygar, and Jenna Lowe. I would check out those three people for human design and gene keys. Um, Raphael does human design, gene keys, and astrology, which is like the trifecta. And um Sam does human design and Jenna does human design and gene keys and astrology as well. So those are some resources for you. Now we're going to get into five specific things I want you to know about, learn about, so you can work with them powerfully in the month ahead. So first we have the new moon in cancer on July 5th. This is the sweetest, most nourishing new moon. It's like Get your pillows cozy up in your home and you're going to be planting new seeds for what you want to. Planting new seeds of nourishment, of the body, of feeling your feelings. Cancer is emotions, right? And it's that water alchemy. Cancer is home. It's safety. So it's a new beginning in the realm of home. It's the new beginning in the realm of safety and Long gone are the days where 
we can pretend that our safety is something that other people control. Like we can't count on the government for safety. We can't count on the collective for safety. Each one of us is responsible for creating our own safety, right? And creating that safe space within us and those safe relationships in our life, right? And it's really a new beginning in that just deep fucking mother's milk nourishment energy. It's a time to slow down and nourish yourself, hydrate yourself, because this is a marathon, not a sprint. Okay. So let yourself slow down with this new moon in cancer, and you're going to be having a new beginning in all of the themes of cancer energy. Okay. Then on June, not June, July 11th, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, art, and money is going to enter Leo. So the love, beauty, art, and money codes of the collective are going to be activated when when you embody Leo energy, okay? Leo is the leader. It's the inner child. It's courage. It's joy. It's delight. It's creativity. It's expression. It's play. How can you have more fun? How can you be more bold? How can you be more audacious? Are you going to wear hot pink from head to toe for Venus and Leo and just strut your stuff? It's fixed fire, okay? It rules the heart and the back. So Venus and Leo is like very passionate, very dramatic, very just the Venusian is also the feminine. And so leaning into this playful energy, leaning into this big, unfiltered, unapologetic energy is going to activate your love, beauty, art, and money. So that's the beginning. That's the first half of July. We have this new moon in Cancer, which is super, super nourishing. And then we have the loud Leo for Venus in Leo on the 11th. Then things get interesting. And by interesting, I say things get gnarly, things get cray cray, things get a bit aggressive astrologically. So on July 15th, we have one of the most gnarly aspects of all of 2024 we have mars conjunct uranus and taurus so something to know about this energy is the last time mars and uranus made an aspect in the sign of taurus was when there was an insurrection at the capital of the United States. I don't know if you remember this, but literally the moment that that uh, Mars entered Taurus, I believe, it was a few years ago, I'm blanking on the exact date, but was when people in the United States went to the capital and they overtook it, you know, by force, right? That was fucking scary. That was like, you know, what we're witnessing is we're witnessing the collapse of the American empire and we're witnessing the collapse of all of these systems and structures, this, these oppressive systems and structures, but it's not going down without a fight, y'all. It's not going down without a fight. And so Mars conjunct Uranus, Mars is the planet of war, aggression, passion, and action. Conjunct means together with Uranus, the planet of shock, upheaval, change, and revolution. So when you combine the planet of war and aggression with the planet of shock and upheaval and change, that's very, very, very volatile energy. So it's important to be aware of. I would be pleasantly surprised if there was not some kind of extremely shocking, horrendous news related to the ongoing violence on the globe right now around July 15th. I would be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised, but it's written in the astrology, like don't speed on that day. Mars rules the police. Okay. Be aware. Don't run your mouth. Don't, you know, sit on that email, sit on that text. It's going to be really easy to be explosive. And then it's in the, in the sign of Taurus. Taurus rules the financial markets. Taurus rules money. Taurus rules Mother Earth. You know, there could be some really shocking um, natural disasters at some point. So it's just really important to be aware of. Obviously, this is going to be impacting the whole collective and we'll see how that plays out. 
it's going to be impacting you specifically in your unique natal chart as well. So for me as a Taurus rising is happening in my first house of self and my body. So I'm going to be making sure I drink a lot of water because Mars is very hot to the touch. Um, you know, it's very fiery energy. And so just being really clear about that, it's not, you know, we start off the month super nurturing, right? It's not nurturing astrology. It's a very aggressive, volatile, um, angsty astrology. And there's already a lot of volatility in the collective. And there's already a lot of angst in the collective. So it's really important for you to root down to rise up. Root down the first part of the month is, is nourishment and rooting down so you can rise up, so you can be just firm like a tree during Mars conjunct Uranus. Okay. That's a really, really, really important day. And it's not like it's only happening that day. Um, we're going to be building up to that energy. And yeah, it is, it's very intense. So it's important to be aware of. Right now, what are we doing? We're studying the weather. I'm sharing with you the weather forecast, okay? Do I know exactly how it's all going to be expressed? No, but I can tell you the energies that are here. And the energies never lie. Especially when you're in right relationship with them. That's when you can co-create with them positively. With Uranus in the mix, be open to change. Be open to sudden change, okay? Okay. And, and celebrate it and know that you're being clicked into a higher timeline. Now, you need, you, I highly advise that you have something positive to do with all that Mars energy. Go do a workout, go do breath work, go scream into a pillow, do something to move the energy that doesn't harm others. It's very, very important. It's going to be very um palpable in the collective and if you are a mars ruled like i'm thinking you know aries if you're an aries this is going to hit you very specifically because you're you know especially aries rising so yeah that's the middle of the month where we start to ratchet things up and it's only going to continue for the rest of 2024 as we go, go towards eclipse season, as we go towards elections in the United States, which I don't want to be, you know, U.S. centric, but we're witnessing pretty uh, disturbing things happening it, politically around the world, but also specifically in the U.S. right now. And it's written in the stars, and that doesn't mean it's comfortable or correct or you know good it's like things are gonna keep ratcheting up so it's really important for you to learn ground yourself heal step into your full power and create on your terms the systems that you've relied on for so long are shattering before your very eyes and guess who you get to rely on you get to rely on you and you get to rely on your relationship with spirit and you get to rely on, okay, deep soul aligned community and mentorship. That's going to be the game changer. So we have this Mars conjunct Uranus and Taurus on the 15th. Then on the 20th of July, Mars, our friend Mars enters Gemini. So Mars just touched Uranus and Taurus. Then five days later, he will enter Gemini. Gemini is where Jupiter is right now. Mars is the planet of action, passion, aggression, and war. If you can focus on action and passion instead of aggression and war, that's a very good use of Martian energy. So Gemini rules information, data. There can be a lot of action spreading misinformation we can expect during that. But like taking... Just be very aware of how you speak during Mars and Gemini. Your words can cut. Your words can become a weapon during Mars and Gemini. Gemini is the ability to hold multiple truths at once. It's the lungs. It's the nervous system. It's the breath. So a really good thing to do during Mars and Gemini is do breath work. 
because you're taking action through your lungs, right? You're moving that energy. And then finally, we have at the end of the month, just one day later on the 21st of July, we have the full moon in Capricorn. This is the second full moon in Capricorn in a row. We had a double dose. So at the end of June, we had the full moon in Capricorn at the beginning of Capricorn. Okay. This is a full moon in Capricorn at 29 degrees. It is the end of Capricorn. And the last degree of every sign is always the most intense expression of that sign because it's like, it's this sign's last chance to express. It's like when you're out and the bartender says last call, it's like your last chance to order something before they close, right? So it's last call for Capricorn energy and full moons are times of climax, manifestation, letting go, um, release. They're very, very tense aspects because it's this tension between the sun, which is being cancer and the full moon, which will be in cap. And so Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. It is boundaries, discipline, limitation, obstacle, legacy, success, time, building things that last. All right. It is that legacy you came here to make. So there's going to be a release in the themes of legacy, success, structure, discipline. Anything that's standing in the way of your discipline must be cleared. And this is a very interesting one because paired with the Saturn retrograde in Pisces, there's going to be some tough exposure. It really feels like maybe things you don't want to look at, like this is what I'm really, really feeling for July as, as I talk with, you know, my clients, as I speak with my loved ones, as I just feel into the collective, there is such a palpable, massive siphoning out right now. You will be called to make choices. You will be called into deeper levels of discernment. Like this is what we've been talking about for years with new earth. It's like, okay, New earth isn't going to be all sunshine and rainbow and roses. And so the first half of the month, I really want you to focus on nourishing yourself, having that new moon and safety in the body and feeling your emotions, right? And then Mars conjunct Uranus and Taurus, things, is, things are going to get ratcheted up, okay? And it's up to you to anchor yourself, you to ground yourself, you to be okay with the sudden changes and decide who you're going to be through it all right here, right now. And then we have Mars and Gemini and this full moon in Capricorn is extremely exposing energy in the realms of discipline and obstacle and all that's required of you to build the legacy and build the dream. So if I were to sum up, sum up July, it's, you know, nourish first it's like nourish so you can warrior you know what i'm saying nourish the warrior root down to rise up the first half of the month focus on your nourishment second half of the month focus on your rise your ascension it's time to take action because there's going to be big changes and you're going to be called forward in your divine assignment. You really will. We all will. And it's not whether you're getting called, it's are you willing to answer? And are you willing to answer in the way that you're being called to answer? The, the sacred warrior, the protector of the light. No more love and light, you know, frou-frou, go with the flow. No, I'm here to serve and protect the true anchored light, not the floaty mystic, the true anchored light. So this is July, 2024. It is, um, it's potent. <laughs> it's potent. And I would love to hear from you in the comments below what landed for you, what's happening for you in your life. And if you desire my guidance, my support and my mentorship as we move into this month, into these next six months of 2024, a few different ways you can do so with me. First, I'm welcoming one-on-one -on -one mentorship clients. These are six-month transformations, so you can start in July. 
and then we'll be done around January. And, you know, I'm your personal astrologer. I'm your personal breathwork facilitator. I'm your high performance coach. I am your shamanic healer. I am all, I'm your human design projector. I'm here to guide you and build systems for your efficiency. So that's the first thing. If you want to go deep specifically in astrology, I have readings and I have astrology apprenticeships. So that's something you can reach out to me about. So the way you can do that is my email and my work with me page is below. So yeah, I can't wait to hear from you. And here we go, July. Here we go, July. Faded, faded times.